We are here to proclaim and declare to you that God has unlimited possibilities. The word unlimited takes possibility to a whole new realm. The word unlimited goes beyond all, all confines of time, space, anything. Possibilities, limitless. That's God. That is our God. That would be Kavu possibilities. When the ceiling is unlimited. Hallelujah. Just as far as you'd like to go with it. He's not looking at his limitations. He has none. He's just asking you to take the limits off. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands and bless our God. We're going to see what God wants to do today. What else he would like to do today. Whatever he wants is exactly what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, just raise your hand one more time and we're just going to bless him. We'll bless him. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with all that is within us. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Mark 11, 22 through 24. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. Peter had called to his mind the remembrance of that fig tree he spoke to and said, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. Spoke to him the day before, and now in 24 hours it's withered away from the root. 
And he says, you have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. For truly, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Hallelujah. And now we know it's fear that keeps you out of that world. Now, I got to thinking about things this morning. The Lord was, um, was talking to me about these things, about some things. One, uh, you know, dimensions of time, dimensions, dimensional things. See, dimension, a one-dimension world is, uh, you have, if you have a dot, if you just made a dot on a piece of paper, that's a zero dimension. It's a zero point. But if you made another dot, then you have a one dimension. But then if you, made, if you made another set and doubled that, you would have two dimensions. And now you can see a box. But if you doubled that and connected them, you have three dimensions. Now you see a cube. But if you doubled that, then you would have a four-dimensional world. And in that four-dimensional world, then they they call that, you know, a, a different name, and we'll get into that sometime. But, but you have a four-dimensional world. Now, if I remember this right, I believe it was the, the ancient rabbis uh, taught that there are ten dimensions, but you can only know four of them. So, in other words, four dimensions is as far as your mind can compute. That's as far as the human mind can begin to think about. And if you'll look at it, uh, we, there is a four-dimensional picture you can look up. It's a, it's a, a picture that um, Salvador Dali <clears throat> painted of a four-dimensional cross and Jesus on the cross. And when you look at that picture, Jesus is off the cross, and there's no nails there's nothing there. He's still in the same position, but he's off the cross. And it's a wild-looking picture. But he discovered something in a four-dimensional world. And so this is the world. See, three dimensions keep you earthbound in perception especially. But in the fourth dimension, you begin to be free of that. Now, if four dimensions do this, what would ten dimensions reveal? The ancient Jews teach there are four dimensions, but we can only know, I mean, ten dimensions, but we can only know four of them. The fourth dimension looks like magic to the common person. Once you pass the fourth dimension, you begin to enter the realm of faith. <laughs> only your spirit can travel beyond the fourth. Once you begin through this, you start to enter the realm of of creation, the realm of creativity. Not only to dream things, but into the realm of God creating those things. Your spirit through faith can connect you to that world. When you hear people speak of the great reset and so forth, like uh, Klaus Schwab, Noah Harari, you hear all these governments trying to, to bring everybody into one a one world government or a one world regime, what you're hearing is a plan to control the fourth dimension. Yes. Uh, the Lord won't let me say this word right now, but the occult world seeks to travel dimensional space. That's what the occult world tries to do, and that's why this one world reset and one world government is an occultic-based world. It's all occultic-based. The, the, the um, ritual at the Gothard Tunnel in Switzerland, CERN on the Temple of Apollo, opening portals and so forth, and Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction and so forth, all of this is occult-based. It's all occult-based, and, and the, those that want to control the fourth dimension 
because to keep you bound in a world that's impossible, you can't achieve anything outside of it. And that's the only world they can control because it takes faith to enter into the realm of God in the realm of creation. See, God, God is not, uh, God, God's world is not science. God's world is where science is created. Science has a beginning just like anything else. The only thing that don't have a beginning is God himself. And so science is where it, it's, you enter into the world, where, uh, the world of the supernatural and the world of faith and the world of, of through the ten dimensions. And you enter into God's world where all things are created. Yes. And so if the occult world can travel around dimensional space, I know this sounds heavy. Man, this is heavy sounding, ain't it? But if the, this is a prophetic world, this is a prophet teaching. This is the world I walk. I, I like to walk around in. This is the world where prophets will see into and see something so wild, and they'll tell it. And people say, "Ah, oh, that can't be true. That can't be true." That's because they're trapped in a three-dimensional world. Most people are trapped in a two-dimensional world. And if somebody claims to be an atheist, they're really trapped in one straight line. A one-dimensional world. Two dots. That's it. So you have a life of two dots and one line. And your line is always this. There is no God. There is no God. That's your world. It's one dimension. Two dimension says, hmm, look at that. You know, it's like a picture of the Mona Lisa. Two dimensions. So, wow, look at that. There might be a God. And a three-dimensional world starts saying, man, there's more to this than we ever saw. Look at this. It's like going from black and white to living color all at once and depth and perception. But a four-dimensional world. Oh, you start entering into the world that created the nails that put him on the cross. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know? You're not listening to me. You're about to enter that world. So the occult world seeks to travel dimensional space and time, forward, backward, especially diagonally. Uh, that's something for another time. This makes them look supernatural, and it makes the occult world look powerful, yet it is not at all powerful. It's actually science. Now, God, on the other hand, is the author of the creative world. And uh, in Salvador Dali's four-dimensional painting of Jesus, I wish we had that we could put on the screen to let you see that. Uh, I have it, but I just didn't have time to get it to him. Uh, the painting of Jesus on the cross, there's no nails. There's nothing in the natural to hold him there. It, and this starts to reveal something to us. It was his faith that held him on the cross. It was his faith that held him there. It shows he came from a world that creates nails. <laughs> the spirit world of God, the world of the Holy Ghost, is not science. It is the world that creates science. The prophetic is tomorrow's science. In that world, the world of ten dimensions, science says you enter the world. Now, this is, this is what they call ten dimensions. I had it wrote down. I wish I could find it right here. And, you know, it don't come by wishing. It comes by looking. And so inside this, they say, here it is. See? Faith found it. It says, um, and I wrote it down this way, a 3D world is awesome, but a 4D world is more awesome. <laughs> But a 10-dimensional world, a 10-D world is almost unfathomable. A 10-dimensional uh, being, or a 10-dimensional uh, being, a single, timeless, infinite entity that encompasses everything and anything instead of being one with everything and anything. 
This is the way science defines it. But so see, well, we don't have time to get in. People say, ah, Brother Robin, that's just kind of crazy, and you're talking heresy. Well, not really, if you just listen. Uh, it encompasses, it's a being of 10 dimensions would be infinite, would be a being that encompasses everything and anything, that's around everything and anything, instead of just being one with everything and anything, but, the, but, the, but God who encompassed everything and anything created it all in the palm of his hand according to Isaiah 40 and the water and the mountains and all of that stuff. Then he became a man and became in everything. And so now here we are. He is asking you. He became one. He became a man bore our sickness, carried our pain, carried our sin, went into hell, paid the price, rose again after three days and nights, and he's asking you by faith to receive him as Lord so you can enter into that world and become one with him. Now, but science defines ten dimensions as this, length, width, depth, time, that would be four. Then probability, they say possible universe, all possible universes branching from the same start conditions. All possible spectrums of universes with different start conditions. They just start going on and on. In other words, it's the world of probability, possibility. I said probability. Possible universe is what I meant to say. So it's the world of probability, possible universes. All possible universes branching from the same start conditions, all possible universes with different start conditions. In other words, the world where God himself said, let there be light, there was light, the universes are still expanding at the speed of light. So it all came from him. So when Jesus came to the earth, now you got to listen close to what I'm telling you. So when Jesus came to the earth, he began his journey to the cross. At the River Jordan, when the Spirit, when he said, I'm consecrated, I'm consecrating right now, <clears throat> I'm not being baptized as a sign uh, uh, for remission of sin. John didn't want to baptize him because he said, I'm baptizing for the remission of sin. And Jesus, you don't have any sin. Jesus said, that's not why I'm being baptized, John. I'm being baptized unto all righteousness. In other words, it's a consecration of, of what I'm making a consecration before my Father, before heaven and earth and all the spirit world to hear it, that I am going to do what it takes to put this back right again. Everything Adam lost. <clears throat> So when Jesus came to the earth, he began his journey to the cross <clears throat> from, that from that point, from the day he was born. <clears throat> the world of creation to the world that it created. Therefore, then as he came to the cross to fulfill the plan of God to redeem his family, picture this. Picture him coming down from heaven, descending through the dimensions backward. Coming toward the cross, walking on total faith, fulfilling the prophecies that he himself gave to men that they would prophesy. Then as he came nearer to the cross, look at Salvador Dali's painting. And picture Jesus going backward to the cross from the world of no nails to the world where his faith created the nails that nailed him to it. I know that's kind of heavy sounding, but think about that. <clears throat> Thank you. Think about that. So on that 3D painting of Salvador Dali's, Jesus is off the cross and there's no nails. Picture it going backward. He's going to the cross coming from the world of creation that he created. St. John chapter 1 says he created it all. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. This gives you an idea why it can't be Buddha, Mohammed, or anybody else but Jesus. So he comes to the world. It's like that painting revealed something. I don't even know if they know what it revealed, but it revealed the world of no nails but a being, the God of creation, taking flesh, used his faith to go to the cross, but there had to be something hold him there. 
His faith created the very nails. And his faith put him on the cross and to hold his body up there, nails were created and slammed it to the cross. But he had to come into the three-dimensional world, come through the fourth dimension in order to get to the nails. I know that's heavy. I, it's, but anyway, we begin to see this. He came from the place of no pain, entered the place of great pain. First, the created nails. Then beyond it, if you kept going back beyond it, at that point on the cross, it's where the spirit world and the natural met. At that place on the cross, the place of great pain, <clears throat> the place of great exchange, the place of the created nails, then the sin of man that demanded the sacrifice, then keep going down, keep going into the world of the spirit, to the world of darkness. Then you find that he descended into hell, had to be loose from the pains of death, Acts 2. Into hell, the lowest part, to pay the price for that sin. Yet it was not his sin. He had to be loosed after three days and nights because of the body of the first Adam lay in the ground three days and nights. After that, he was loosed because he committed no sin, but died the death of a sinner with our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Therefore, he left our sin in hell and ascended back through the dimensions, so to speak, back into the tomb, picked up his body, left the tomb, ascended back through all the dimensions and went back to heaven, presented his blood for us and invites you and I to use the same faith to accept his sacrifice, enter through the spirit by faith to the world of total creativity where nails or anything else is created. Does that make sense to anybody? Am I, I know that's kind of heavy. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah, but when you go back and listen to this more and more, and as we begin to talk about things going forward, we're talking about prophetic teaching. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23, 24, we read that. You know, all things are, and then Jesus goes on to say that all things are possible to him that believes. In that realm, wicked men can't travel. Now, now listen close to what I'm saying. Wicked men seek to control the four-dimension world, which is one step above the three that you're in right this moment looking at. But the fourth dimension is where they seek to control. That's where the Antichrist will step into. That's where it will be. That's where it will all take place, controlling the three dimensions from the four dimension. And that's why there will be an image of him that he causes to speak and so forth and so forth. This is what Harari is talking about. This is what Swab is talking about. When they talk about a screen will be pulled down, everything will change. It's all occultic based and it's all technology driven. Because witchcraft is nothing but a high form of science and math. It's a, it's a manipulation, getting demons involved to control four dimensions. And so wicked men can't go beyond that dimension through the world into the world of creation where God creates it all. You can, but they can't. Why? Because it takes faith to access this. It was faith that held Jesus on the cross. It was faith that brought him up out of hell. It was his faith that released him from the cross. It was his faith that did all of that. He walked and perfectly pleased God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it's faith in the world of the spirit that accesses that realm. And Satan can't get there. The Tower of Babel was nothing more than Nimrod trying to access the fourth dimension to control everything below it. That's all it's about. That's what Baal worship is about. 
That's what Baal is all about. Oh, if we had time, one, one, we're going to keep going forward in the days ahead on different teachings. So really pay attention and keep your faith out. In that realm, wicked men can't travel to that realm. And no, they'll never get into heaven. Because you have to have faith to go there. And the scripture says, wicked men have not faith. And it takes faith to go there. Hallelujah. But that is where he wants his people to be. That's where God wants you and I to be. This is why people will go to heaven. Now listen close to this. Now you got to listen to this. People, you will hear prophets and, and talk about, they'll go to heaven and bring back a report and see things that they have never saw because someone entered that world with their faith to the world of creation. Someone entered into it. Someone uh, took their faith, entered into that world of creation, and believed for a roller coaster to be in heaven one day. Oh, yeah. Or something wild. Or believed for their pets to be there with them. One translation says this, anything you ask God for in Jesus' name, he said, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. I'll make it for you. Now you know why the Apostle Paul said, I knew a man above 14 years ago that uh, whether in the body or out of the body, he said, I can't tell, God knows. He said that man went to the third heaven and saw things that are not lawful to utter. What did he see? He saw the world of creation. 